If you were a five-year-old, I'd explain to you that we're going around in the desert over 500 miles an hour in a pack of other jets. There's nowhere else on this planet where we get to race against other individuals. I personally am horrible at racing on a clock. I like racing other human beings because there's a psychological, aggressive style to the, to the Reno National Air Races. To each their own, but that's how I fly it. First of all, you gotta talk to a five-year-old like they're a knowledgeable human and not this five-year-old. That's important, because they are. So, second of all, we take eight planes, we put them close together, we fly in a near circle at about 100 feet off the ground at 500 miles an hour, and the guy in front wins. Sport class is different than the T6 or some of the other bigger classes because we all have different airplanes. And different airplanes means uh, we're all experimental. And the only rule in sport class is it has to be a piston engine under a thousand cubic inches. Beyond that, it's innovation. So we are the class of innovation and we have guys running turbochargers and superchargers and nitrous oxide and any way to add power and uh, it's pretty much uh, at your own uh, risk how far you want to go. High flying class, we are primarily uh, racing the Pitts biplane. It's a small single seat aerobatic biplane. Um, speeds anywhere from the 180 to uh, the 220, 230 mile an hour range this year. Um, most of the planes are moderately modified. Uh, they're not custom ground built. Uh, a couple of them are bordering on that. Uh, it's really good close racing and it's a lot of fun. The unique part about the biplane class is we have two sets of wings. That's the biggest, you know, difference between most of the classes. Um, they look a lot cooler and they're a lot more fun than the rest of the, the class or the other classes. Actually, that, yeah, it, it's more fun. When you were a kid, if you ever got a toy airplane, it was usually a biplane. So, you know, being able to actually get one and being, you know, flying it just brings you back to your childhood. Formula One air racing is like, um, it's like stock car racing on a big oval track, but with airplanes. So think about it as if you had a scooter and your friend Jenny down the block also had a scooter and you're trying to race her as fast as you can. Um, we each have our little airplane and we each, we give them all a crazy name. This mine's called the Atomic Pumpkin. Uh, we have a monkey ninja over there. But you can go faster than her and you can only go left. So if you're trying to run around trash cans, trying to beat Jenny, yeah, we race around a track, around big pylons to show us where our track is. Now you're trying to kick fast and she slows down and you speed up, but you can't pass her on the inside because there's not enough room between Jenny and the trash can. So you pass Jenny on the outside. Just like stock cars, all at the same time, eight of us, we go around for eight laps and whoever crosses the finish line first wins. And you get cake. <laughs> Well, if I was to explain it as simply as possible, I would say... Stoll Drag, capital S-T-O-L, Drag. <laughs> Stoll Drag racing is almost identical to race... Okay, let's do it. Stoll Drag is, is like a drag race with airplanes instead of cars. If I was explaining Stoll Drag racing to a five-year-old, I would say it's almost identical to car drag racing. So it flies real slow, lands real slow, real short, but it goes pretty fast. Where you start head-to-head -head with your competitor with two lanes running straight down the course. You get to do a, a turnaround, which actually is a big part of Stoll Drag racing. It's a bit different though because you go as fast as you can, but you have to slow down and stop on the other side of the line and land as short as you can, turn around, fly. 
So we take off real slow, go as fast as we can, slow back down again, land, turn around, and do it again. We are the planes with the cartoon tires, and we're lining up like NASCAR. You know the little guys that run around the track that you see on TV? Well, that's us, except we're going straight and level, down and back to a complete stop, coming back as fast as we can with these big cartoon tires. We're drag racing, NASCAR style. There's nothing like it. We're here at the Reno Air Races. Well, it's the, uh, it's the best racing class, of course. Only the best pilots can fly in the T6s. This is one of the funnest classes there is. We help everybody out. If somebody needs something, hey, come over to the pit. If I don't have it, maybe the next pit does. And, and then we get breakfast and lunch and dinner, who's ever cooking, and the party every night. It's just great, so. It takes a lot of money. <laughs> Start is very important. They get us all lined up headed down to the first pylon and then they release us and say gentlemen you have a race so it's real exciting at that point with the t6s you know we're all big family it's kind of let's just show up just to meet everybody and bring an airplane and go have some fun there's your second and third competitors okay. pull one over on us you can pass it back to our leader now I fly in the Unlimited class, and the Unlimiteds, uh, just like the name says, don't really have any limits. We can have as much horsepower as we want. We, there is a minimum horsepower. NASCAR on steroids. And you can cut the wings. You can put a one-bladed prop on it if you want. You can put a five-bladed prop. This is bad for you. It's very expensive, and nobody will like you for it. You can put a Merlin. You can put an Allison. You can put a Griffin. Uh, it's uh, kind of like uh, what's the biggest, baddest thing you can think of. So it's really just exactly what it states. It's unlimited. Hey, this is something you should never get into. They tend to be the top speed airplanes in the races. The butterflies, before you even get in the airplane and everything, are, are going crazy. Once you get in the airplane and get the engine running, it's down to business. We wouldn't do it if we weren't having fun and had a little bit of adrenaline flowing. Uh, once you get in the airplane, you don't know if you're tired, hungry, hot, cold, sleepy, none of that. It all kind of goes out the window, so. I think I'd probably apply the jets because I think they have air conditioning. Yeah.